Welcome to Grey Overload. I'm Anthony, and to start off this week, let's uh, talk about some, I think, disappointing direction that LG is going. Now, one thing, the reason why I'm focusing on LG is because it's a, I think they make pretty good technology overall. I've been impressed with their TVs, with their, you know, OLEDs, and that's been a very impressive thing. Granted, I didn't get one. I, you can see my review. I got the Samsung S95B, but I was very well considering the G2 and the C2 at the time as well. But I do have a lot of their appliances. I have their washer and dryer that I've had now for two or three years. The I have their uh, dishwasher, which has worked well. They've been very reliable. And um, with their technology, I use their app, and it's a nice piece of technology. It helps me keep track on top of maintenance of it and everything else. But their vision of where they want to go is just maybe uh, disappointing. And I don't think that it's going to try to woo more customers into them, but I think it's going to uh, create a little bit of, you know, people maybe looking in a different direction because of where they're going and this is you know a problem for many different companies we've already seen it with some car companies wanting to have subscriptions to unlock features in their cars which i think is just outrageous right you built the car give that product to the person and not have a subscription to determine what can or cannot be used you've already built the car with those features in it why can't they the user then just pay for it and then just use it instead of having a subscription. I, what was it, BMW for heated seats in some countries, I think it was, and some others. And this is the concerning thing where people are trying, or companies are trying to get a bigger and bigger profit margin, and they're trying to figure out ways to be able to uh, access that profit margin by using these subscriptions, and it's not good for making your company look good in the consumer light. And I think that this drive every single quarter here in especially in America every company is driving to have a bigger profit margin each quarter and more profit each quarter and when you take your eye off of the customer right you got you have to pay the piper at some point and this is going to cause a issue later on where people are going to get upset and they're either going to go to older stuff or they're not just going to buy your stuff or stop the subscription or figure out a way around it. You're incentivized people to figure out a way around it eventually by starting to charge them too much and having too many subscriptions. As you, we have already seen this um, subscription model do the same thing inside of the video streaming service where people started seeing that they had too many streaming services and they started to cut back. So. Let's jump over here to the site here, but LG's bold new vision is, you know, they're transitioning a platform-based service model and ex transition to a platform-based service business model and accelerating B2B business and proc procuring new growth engines. If LG was just going to, you know, keep their existing and then work on new stuff, this might be a great idea but trying to have a service platform I think is as in everybody right now we are moving out of that service industry uh, or subs I should say subscription side of things and people are more conscious of it so they're trying to weave around that people are the right to repair is moving more and more in the right direction <laughs> in I know horrible but in the right direction um, to so people can you know people want to try to avoid things that just won't get repaired it's not it's not as prevalent but people like Lewis Rossman have done a great job and that's where I saw him do a video like this and this is just you know outrageous I, I support his right to repair and I support a lot of right to repair stuff I think everyone thinks should be able to be repa repairable and you can say, well, that might not make people money or whatever else. Here, here's me out on that. Um, the reason why I like to see things repairable is because, one, people are going to be more of, even Lewis Rossman, right, uh, and other repair groups, Northridge Fitch. Why do people still use them? Even though they show off how to repair something. People may not have time, but they can go and see that the person knows what they're doing and how to repair it. That's why their businesses grew 
while they're showing people how to do it, right? Well, let's say your products are repairable too. Well, what's going to happen is, is that people know that they can get a longer life out of your product. So they're going to go buy your product. Now, granted, that product may be longer life, but what product are they going to recommend? Your product. So then now your product gets recommended to other users. And by the way, word of mouth advertising is the highest retention rate out there. So if you have a friend, a family member that is going to say, hey, this product I recommend and it's a good product and everything else plus you can repair it it's you know they're allowing it to repair you can get a longer life out of it one that is going to be a gravitation because people remember 40s 50s 60s you know all that time a lot more stuff was repairable back then easier to repair so that's going to be that group that's going to be oh that makes sense then there's a newer group that is more strapped for cash and everything else and you know if you can get something repairable guess what well that's going to be a bigger incentive there as well so they can get a longer thing out of the product granted you may not have the upfront cost but guess what that upfront cost if you're hoping that you have a plan of obsolescence and everything else chances are that they're not going to go back to your product right unless every company colludes which then you're going to be in a lawsuit. That is how it happens. Um, eventually, governments get to figure this out. It may take them a while, but eventually they do. And there's going to be somebody that's going to cut you out and be lower price. And guess what happens? You've just lost that customer and everything else. Then let's take, let's say if you want to be, you know, green and you want to be good for the environment. Well, you getting something that's repairable is better for the environment and everything else because you're not filling a landfill with just everything out there. Yeah, a lot of stuff can be, you know, stripped out of these appliances and everything else. The problem is it doesn't always happen and they just go in the landfill. And so if you have something repairable, you prevent or elongate before that goes into the landfill. I think that these are all good things overall and that you transition that and then you establish yourself as the product to go to. We've seen car companies do this, right? We've seen companies that want to stand in reliability more or repairability and they're starting to take off more and more and I think LG just kind of missed that boat and they could have had a, a great business. I don't think that you need to have certified people always repairing it. I think that you need to have good people repairing it and you need to have the parts out there to be repairable. And I think if the companies really started to see that that is an opportunity side, I think that they would actually have some business too. But they're missing the whole boat. So let's go back to this article of what LG is wanting to do. So they want to accelerate this, growing and pursuing, and creating new stuff. Now, while I like the LG ThinQ app, I think it's a, a great informational, helps you adjust, helps you, you know, get more data out of your washers and dryers, adjust it, download different, um, uh, what, different uh, cycles. There we go. I think it works really well. It, tell, it keeps track of how many washes you have. Hey, you should go do a you know, clean on these things. Make sure you, you know, have the vent. It can even tell different things like this. I do not think paying for that as a service every single month is going to be viable. You know, you're dropping my washer, or washer and dryer. We're well over a grand each. Um, and I want something, you know, that could handle everything here. So, um, I have kids, wife, kids, you know, that, that sort of thing. So big enough one to be able to handle all that, but doing all that, that's, that's a, a huge upfront cost. And then you're telling somebody as they buy it that, Oh, there's going to be subscription. I think that's going to make people look the other way. And even if you were to give them three free, three free months or something like that, I don't think that's enough. I can go get something else and it might be, uh, you know, I'll take a chance on something else. And guess what? If it's better, you're, I'm not coming back to you. And if it doesn't have a subscription, it's going to be somebody else. Let's say it's even more repairable. I think if you took the stance of, uh, hey, let's do it uh, this way. Let's have our parts out there. Let's make our machines. Let's make sure that we can make sure that these products last as long as possible. I think people will be willing to actually look at your company more and go that route rather than trying to charge them more and more out of it. So they want to grow their profit. Look at all this. It's all about profit and growing profit. And, you know, the key elements to their vision. Let's jump over to here. 
their web OS operating system. Now they bought that back in the day and I don't remember who had it at the time, but they bought WebOS. Remember it was supposed to be a cell phone OS? Man, it takes me back. I kind of wish that it actually did take off. Okay, quick side note. But they're going to put more advertisements into products, more, you know, expanding content. This is just, re let's say you buy the LG TV, OLED. I already hate the Samsung stuff that they throw all over there. They throw so many ads all over this stuff. It is ridiculous. You spend, let's say you get a 65-inch OLED. Let's say at the time, brand new, top line one is what? Two to four grand for let's say 65 inch someplace in there um, you know you have the Sony ones all that stuff let's say 1700 you can get a more basic one let's say but you're, you're getting a, one of their ones you know like C2's G3 or C series G series you know the Samsung S95 B OLED the Sony ones right and now you have ads on top of it you have to realize, LG, that you're trying to push something that when your customers look at it, what they're assessing how you are treating them. Same with Windows. Windows is throwing in so many more ads today than they ever were. And every single time I look at it and say, hey, and more and more people come up to me and say, why is there so much ads in Windows, right? And when people are coming up to me, you know, they know me as, hey, let's take a look at the, you fix the computer. Um, that is not a good sign because people are starting to get annoyed with it, right? They're trying to get, the ads are now being prevalent enough to try to, I need to get around it. And it's not going to help as YouTube, you know, forces more ads and everything else. If ads are more prevalent, Netflix has an ad tier series. No, ad support is a tier. Now, the, you know, there's all these things, but people, as ads get in there, as they try to get more money, like Netflix is trying to get more money out of that, so I have, had an ad tier to get more people on, right? People are going to be more conscious of ads because they're not going to want to sit through it, right? They were trying to get away from ads from the old TV model. That's why I think a lot of these ads are filtering in in other ways because, yeah, there's, there's money to be spent on this. So you, this, is, this is kind of crazy. Now, it evolves the thing, queue up appliances that upgrade functional function, functions customers need after the purchases will evolve into home as a service. No, just upgrade the latest firmware. And in fact, this could be, um, if there is a security risk and you don't update and it's connected to the network, I, you know, I'd like to see people actually show this is, you know, LG's responsibility. Th that could be interesting going forward. Um, I would say, you know, as much as possible, keep your IoT stuff on a separate part of the network. Don't try to combine it with your personal, you know, computers and stuff. But maybe that's a different video. Um, hyper personalization. I hate personalization. I hate it. It's never good and it's always wrong. Uh, <laughs> subscriptions and smart home services. Are, is this going to be, hey, I buy it once and put it in my home? Because that's what I'm starting to go to. Home assistant, stuff like that, can be in my home, can be always up. I don't like it when something goes down and, you know, all my smart home stuff is nothing critical. It's all secondary. I can get around it quite easily if need be. Um, you know, I have it like plugs and, you know, secondary lights, stuff like that just to try out. And even the um, lights, the, I have Govi, they have a LAN um, thing that you can access it through the LAN. So that's actually, and that's all local. So that's pretty good. But this home as a service is just what I want. Now, you know, appliances, rental care, service business expanding include these services for spaces. You know, I could maybe see this as a, you know, if you want to buy into something or have it as a rental thing, maybe helping you out there, right, and you have multiple users of people using it. But, um, you know, HVAC business, you know, they're trying to get all these appliances in there and trying to get it looks like a service attached to it get your home there attached to a, this home as a service to grow their market i you know ev charging all these things this is um this is just the next step of trying them trying to transition their business 
as like the car companies, I think it's going to be a detriment to their business and people are going to look elsewhere. People are going to be um, discontent with where it is. They'd rather have it repaired. I'm going to put these articles in there, but you've heard my reasons of why I do not like the home as a service and why they should be moved elsewhere. This is just, I, I can't explain it. It is ridiculous where the direction LG wants to take their company just to grow for profit. I think there's much better ways. You create a better product, you, cre you create, you know, little things that you can expand it with, you know, go into different markets, but this is home as a service. I think it's going to be something where, you know, people like me and I recommend a lot of different stuff, even appliances I recommend, right? Because I, after I buy them, I look at them, you know, I, I don't rotate through appliances, but I keep my eye on them, right? People come ask for my opinion. My parents needed a dishwasher. I bought that for them. Um, and I had to go do research, figure out which one to buy, stuff like that. Happened to buy an LG before they came out with this craziness. Uh, and uh, LG, you don't want to lose somebody like me because of what you did, because my word of mouth advertising is going to uh, move a lot of people to something else because of what you did. And I think that they are thinking uh, for the short term profit gain and not realizing that it could actually hurt their business. So I've rambled on enough here. Uh, <laughs> like we, let's start off a Monday like this, right? But uh, get you all energized. But let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think of home as a service. I think that there can be some great automations in the home. I think that there can be a lot of stuff. I also think that it can be local. I also don't think paying for all this stuff is going to be feasible, especially as we look at you know where the economics are especially as you see everything trying to get a service, everything trying to have something all the time, how is that making sense uh, going forward? It doesn't. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'll be sure to read them. Let me know what you'd like to see um, as well, especially with all these companies or ideas you have. And give me some reasons of why, if companies support right to repair, support um, none of this craziness stuff and how they can be, you know, maybe in wow, just think about this lg if you were to go in and help out and work with you know like a home assistant and stuff like that these you know local on network stuffs and make it open i think that you might actually get more things sold and you might make more money that way too keeping that open protocol and stuff open apis but let me know in the comments below what you guys think and until next time, I am so appreciative of you guys supporting Grave Overload and helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Hitting the subscribe, like, sharing the videos, all that kind of, all that sort of stuff. Until next time, God bless.